blobs of doom that are just comical at this point, orange storm gigas that are still giving people issues, and my buddy Nero takes a look at the Sobel SV08, and it's not great. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 136. Cat cameo! Let's get into it. Hey all, welcome back to the channel. And if you are struggling to get your 3D printers printing with purpose, we can help you. You can reach out to us on all the social medias. You can email us directly if you prefer, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, and we can help you get those printers back to running properly. We're gonna start off with a good one from my friends over at Construct 3D. They have what could be the most impressive blob of doom that I've ever seen. And as we can see, it was human error, not the machine's fault double check your material is actually what you think it is. And we've talked about this many times before, but I think it's always interesting to be able to showcase these uh, real crazy ones. They actually went into a little bit of detail of what happened here. The material used was PCTG, which is a fantastic material. I agree. However, the profile used was for nylon. So the nozzle was nice and hot as it needed to be, but the bed was about 25C lower then required. Eventually, a corner lift its duct to the nozzle. Q blob o doom. That is got to be one of the most impressive blobs of doom that I've ever seen. And if you all don't know the story of Construct 3D, it's one that's worth telling. It's probably worth telling on a podcast. So, hi, Jacob. You're being tagged in this, which means you're going to watch this video. You and your mom should come on a podcast. Yes, I'm calling you out in a video rather than messaging you because it's way more fun to do it this way and I have a feeling you guys would be up to it. <laughs> but no, seriously, the story behind Construct 3D and the team there is just super cool. We actually interviewed them at the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rep Fest where if you guys did actually watch me get my head shaved. Jacob shaved part of my head and Jacob's mom is actually the reason that my hair did not look as crazy because she said, please, I need to fix your hair. We have to clean this up a little bit. I guess it, it was a little long in some areas, a little bit shorter in some other areas. So Jacob's mom helped out there and that was awesome. So thank you, Teresa. That was beautiful. But yeah, we'll card to that so you guys can take a look. The Contract 3D team is super awesome and it would be a lot of fun to hang out with them on the podcast so hopefully they'll be up to it but yeah guys we've talked about this before you do really have to make sure that your materials are correct and if that means you gotta add extra labels to your spools do it if that means you gotta put custom colored spool rings on do it if that means that you need to maybe custom color the carts where you store your filament do it which is something that i've been thinking about doing do you guys want to see us do that it's a pretty simple thing it's just some spray paint and some time but Hey, maybe it can be a fun little stream where we hang out and actually get some work done. Maybe together. That could be fun. Thankfully, with the Construct 3D printer, it's not that bad to service. And we know that because we did do some servicing on one of them at Smurf. But you never want to wake up to see this. It is incredibly disheartening to see. Next up, a tail that is, well, I'm sure weighing a fair bit on both now Joel telling the 3D printing nerd and Uncle Jesse, who are both both dealing with issues with their orange storm gigas this is one of those times where i think elegu flew a little too close to the orange storm of jupiter and this is kind of what happens right in theory this machine is kind of great but in practice it's got a lot of problems and one of the big ones outlined here in joel's video is that the bed is on springs each of the four beds are on springs which is kind of ridiculous it should not be like that and is actively causing problems when it comes to z offset uncle jesse has had a similar issue with his orange storm giga where uh he also found that they can be quite decent engravers and we can see that 52,000 views 10 days ago with joel saying that his orange storm giga still doesn't work that is not an easy thing to have happen so some of the issues that joel outlines are all of these points here right we've got nine individual points on each build plate that need to have set their z offset and it's done manually by using screws in each of the beds and we can see for each of the 36 points you want to get it relatively close and while elegu does say that one full turn is 0.7 millimeters 
I do not understand why the beds could not have been hard mounted and just the hot ends themselves, which the Aura Storm Giga can have up to four printing simultaneously, why those couldn't just be spring mounted instead. Because if the beds and build plates were all at the same level guaranteed, that all you're really dealing with is Z offset and I guess gantry level as well. But I guess I'm a little bit disappointed that this machine has had the launch that it has. There's a lot of value in these really big machines out there that are able to viably print massive parts. And for reference, I believe Mr. Joel Telling here is roughly six foot five or almost two meters for the metrics out there. And this thing is standing on maybe a one foot tall table. It is almost an entire Joel worth of size. These are not small printers and they're not a small expenditure either. I would have hoped that Elegoo would have put some extra time into the development of this machine, but it appears that maybe some corners were cut here. And that sucks because I've had great experiences with Elegoo resin printers. And in fact, I'm really interested in these new Saturn IV machines that just came out. We'll be talking about them and all the other new printers that have come out recently next week. So if you wanna see that, you want to see us kind of rank the new printers in 2024, leave a like and get subscribed because that one will be coming out very soon. And we can see that Uncle Jesse has potentially found a bit of a flaw. Let's take a look. Okay, I, I figured it out here. Uh, this, so I ran the input shaping before I started my print and then it dug into the, the thing there. Then I took this all off. Uh, I reset the That's printer so that good. I can home it so that I can move this out of the way so I can get it off. Well, anyways, uh, I went back in here. After the firmware update, there is a function to check what the bed leveling is. The bed leveling is reset and it's set to negative 17. That'd be a problem. What the heck? That is no... <laughs> near That's what I had as the Z offset and all of those had values assigned to them. We don't want to see machines set their Z offset to negative 17.279 but we did see something similar with Thomas Sonlauterer and his Magneto X where the Z offset the minimum was set to a negative number that was so far away that yeah it just digs into things this could be a firmware thing and as mr nero 3d the canuck creator states with clipper after a firmware update depending on how elegu implemented their way of doing it it may overwrite your old printer.config file with a new one and most likely replacing any old values with it just a heads up there should be a warning for that kind of thing and this brings us to what is likely a good podcast topic but something that i would love for you guys to comment on down below regarding firmware and printers we see a lot of companies just forking mainline clipper and utilizing that and not really contributing back anything and then not really updating it and not allowing the users to do it what is the point of doing this if you ask me i believe that the printers that are utilizing clipper should be baseline clipper if they need to make mods that's fine but still keep it as close to baseline as possible love to know what you guys think down in the comments and i understand that there are some reasons that you might want to have some sort of custom build right the magneto x needs somewhat of a custom build for its magnetic linear rails which uh move very fast that's the best way to describe it at least in that case they're always updating it and they're allowing users to do pull requests and be able to actually contribute to the firmware where some of these companies like Elegoo and Anycubic don't really allow this and kind of lock users out from the ability to make changes like this. And it can be absolutely detrimental to the machines themselves. Like, I want to like the Orange Storm Giga because I have a couple of reasons to own one. Having a really big 3D printer as a business that does 3D printing for people has a lot of value but until some of these firmware bugs get kind of dealt with and honestly until someone figures out some sort of like hard mounting for the bed it's a no-go for me it's too much of a risk especially when you're looking at the purchase price of over two thousand dollars now it's a lot of money to be risking on um an engraver that shouldn't be an engraver and while yes it's one smaller build plate rather than one larger one you only got to replace a quarter of the build plate it's still something that i don't think should happen and the machine should 
have abilities to solve this. But as for this, it's kind of why I don't always recommend updating firmware. We run very outdated firmware on the Mark III's. We are running the Alpha firmware on the XL, and we're running some custom firmware on the Bamboo. Otherwise, we if there's not like a really big reason to update the firmware, if it ain't broke, don't give it a reason to break. The fact that this has happened to more than one person, from what I can tell, is of zero fault their own, is a problem for me. Thankfully, these people, especially Uncle Jesse, have the ear of Elegoo. And I'm hoping that their communications back and forth with Elegoo can push Elegoo to make some changes to this before they start to ship to Kickstarter and then paying customers. Next up, a fail from our Patreon Discord, which is available at the $10 tier and higher via the links in the description. You can join via PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel members, whatever is easiest for you. And now we've welcomed in some new people, which has been a lot of fun recently. This is from Man of the Sky. Uh, I think he took his nozzles to a belt sander. These are next Ruder nozzles. You can tell because of the way that it is. You can actually tell because it's a one-piece nozzle. You can see the heat break there as well. This is new. This is not old and busted. New hotness. And yeah, um, this is what happens when you print abrasives. And you don't even have to print a lot of abrasives for this to end up this way. So a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which both of these were, is uh, considerably larger than 0.4. But the real issue that we're going to see, it's not just a nozzle diameter. You can get away with a little bit of nozzle tomfoolery. It's the Z offset. Your first layers aren't going to stick anywhere near as well as they should. This is the value of getting obsidian nozzles or hardened steel nozzles or even diamond nozzles, which we're going to be saying hi to the Diamondback guys at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, which is tomorrow, Saturday, April 20th and the 21st. So if you are going to be in Colorado hanging out for Rocky Mountain Rep Rap, come and say hi to us. We're going to be filming all weekend. We're going to be doing some live streams if we can, including some 360 content if we can we're just trying to bring more immersive content to you all and i hope you will absolutely enjoy it because i'm really looking forward to it i always love going to the shows saying hi to all of our old friends meeting new friends meeting new fans taking pictures signing autographs and we're going to be on a panel on sunday which is going to be a lot of fun you could put a diamond on this they just don't exist i'm gonna say yet because i feel like we're going to get Diamondback, Mark IV, and Nextruder style nozzles relatively soon. So, Diamondback, I have a five tool head XL. Please. <laughs> Do I have to make more Tommy Boy references? No, no, we love the guys over at Diamondback. And of course, we've interviewed them a couple of times. We'll card to the most recent one at Smurf, where they had a really awesome ice sculpture, which uh, it was a lot of fun. But yeah, guys, don't print abrasives with brass nozzles unless you're expecting them to get destroyed because that is no bueno. This is bad. This is dirty, but fine. This is bad. Last but certainly not least, a good friend of the channel, former podcast guest, and gotta have Nero on more often. He's an awesome podcast guest. We'll card to the most recent podcast with Nero. We always have a ton of fun. We get to hang out and talk shop. But Nero has been digging into the Solval SV08, which is basically a Voron 2.4 clone. But Nero noticed some belt pathing issues. He said, it's not as bad as I thought, but it's bad in another way. Fully pulled the crooked bearing stack in the SV08. While the bottom hole is mangled, it's crooked because they built it with a too short pin, not because the alignment is off. Also, no shim between the bearings, so they're rubbing. So we've got one of the rear idlers here for the SV08. And, well, I will preface this with that Nero is perfectly qualified to talk about this. He is a member of the Voron design team and understands what it takes to not only build 3D printers, but also design them. So I'm going to trust his opinion here. We don't have an SV08. We would like to take a look at one. So Sobel, if you're watching this video... We'd love to get one. I, I know that we were talking about it, but I don't know if it's still coming. Yeah, you gotta put a shim in between. And even on our Trident build, which theoretically is done by now. I am filming this before the Trident is technically done, but it should have printed by now. I hope it's printed by now. We'll card to that series just in case. <laughs> but 
even the trident has a small, I think it's brass, but it could be phosphor bronze, bushing between the bearings, and it keeps the idler pulleys from rubbing on each other, creating excess friction. We can see that the pin was not all the way through, and steel pins are cheap. Look at that. Look at how short that pin is. I'm guessing that this was a mistake on the assembly side, because this should be a pretty easy thing to fix, and it is an easy thing to fix, thankfully. But when we look at the actual idlers themselves, they're crooked. The belt should be riding roughly in the center. As Nero has showed us, if you shim it a little bit, it might work. But there's really not a ton of extra room. But we've also got issues where, as you can see, this is where he first noticed it. Everything is kind of, uh, well, cattywampus, if you will. And unfortunately... The SB08 only includes a PLA profile on the USB, and stock 4 on Orca profiles aren't compatible without modifying the start script. And on top of it, it still has Z drift because it's not set up to use the nozzle switch for offset. It relies entirely on the inductive probe. I don't know, Sovel. We got to do a little bit better. You guys did amazing with the SV06 and SV06 Plus. They are still one of my highest recommended printers to this day. And I want to really like this machine. And they're talking like $600 price point, which is aggressive. But this kind of stuff is not okay. And I'd be okay with paying more to make sure this stuff was solved. What do you guys think? Would you be willing to pay a little bit more to make sure that these issues were solved or are you okay with it and you'll just fix it yourself? I'd be curious to know. But the ones that do pay a little bit more do get their names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. So thank you for contributing to the channel. And right below me will be the entire Printfix Friday series. And next to that will be hopefully my now completed and working Voron Trident. It's gonna be a little jank, but I'm hoping it has printed a bed sheet by now. Here's hoping. But that's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. They don't even know that you're down there. There is a cat in my lap right now. And then she stands up. Okay, come on. Go to your bed.